Good morning, folks. Forgive any glitches. Today as Kat and I were up all night with sick kids, but the sun is chasing away the darkness at the edge of the sky already, so we better get to spaceweathernews.com and luckily find the sun not making us have to do much extra work this morning. Corona hole begins its turn towards the limb. No solar flares, no sunspots, and when we come to the solar wind, we find the stream waning down to ultra-quiet levels. The earth-facing corona hole is expected to have its intensifying wind arrive Sunday night or Monday, but not expected to be major. So folks, three days, three big earthquakes. We went Vanuatu, Chile, and now Indonesia, ringing in at 6.9. Looking back quickly to the 6.8 in Chile we reported yesterday, have now gone back and confirmed. QuakeWatch.net forecaster Rebecca Jo Steelman nailed that one not only in location and timing, but in the magnitude range too. Well done. We're on to weather, and today's featured story is in Nigeria. Major flooding, taking out homes, and has sparked numerous rescues on the raging flows. Up next, we're going to a paper out by some high-level scientists, and one of them is an observer. The topic of neutron modulation of radioactive decay has numerous implications, not the least of which here is forecasting solar flares before they happen. The international team was kind enough to post it for free on Archive, linked below for your consideration. Interesting article up next on astrobiology searches from right here at home. How do we analyze planets, especially if they are young? You know, a young Earth wouldn't have seemed very habitable had we seen it back then. The star around which they orbit is of critical importance, especially because so many stars have super flares. Some of the stars might even be hiding close by to a binary. Might be hard to see. Lots of fun facts in that one. And speaking of fun, moon viewing in infrared. The next level studies of lunar soil, which may also apply to Mars in the future, will be infrared cameras. They do believe they have a solid grasp on the types of images they'll return, like this simulated shot here. Hope it's that good. And speaking of the moon, also linked below is a story that essentially is about a frozen crater lake, well, many frozen crater lakes on the moon and Mercury. The crater depths in some areas vary by 10% for no explicable reason, and using the data from the orbiters of the moon, they have determined that indeed, there are thick ice deposits on both the moon and Mercury. That is star water right there. And last but not least, a paper out describing solar modulation of cosmic rays has data from a device I haven't seen before. Now true enough, they don't have any data past 2012 on this one, but at that point, the sunspots did have the range very low, and we know since then, it's been climbing back up. And it's not hard to see that going back up from the end of this chart has us at the maximum range on record. And in fact, that is the case worldwide. You have to go pre-human science to the Maunder period or earlier to find any time exceeding this modern cosmic ray maximum. They majorly affect the weather, technology, human health, and volcanoes. That last one is the big concern for climate in the coming years. We greatly appreciate your support. If you missed the Plasma Cosmology movie this week, it is linked below. We have the weekly Fly on the Wall podcast coming up in a few hours at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.